Hi folks, Glenn here with another tutorial for you. We're now at episode 87, and this time I wanna show you one of the techniques I use on a regular basis for smoothing skin. Now we're gonna do it on this portrait here of gymnast and food blogger Rosie Burr. It's a fantastic technique. I really like it because First of all, it's realistic. It doesn't give you that kind of porcelain kind of look, so it's a very realistic effect. It helps to maintain detail in the skin, but it also gives you a heck of a lot of control. Let's dive over into Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are then in Photoshop. Now, there are actually quite a few steps involved in this process, so I'll just take you through those one by one. Over in the Layers panel here, we've got the background layer, our original image, which has actually been partly retouched. I'm first of all going to create a copy of that layer there by pressing down Command or Control J, and we'll just rename that to Smooth Skin. The next thing we're going to do with this Smooth Skin layer is change the blend mode. We're going to go from Normal to Vivid Light, and that creates this very high contrast kind of image. The next thing we do is go to the Image menu, adjustments, and then invert, or you've got the keyboard shortcut there of Command or Control I. Then we go across to the filter menu, choose other, and we're actually gonna use high pass, which some people may associate with really extreme kind of sharpening. Well, here we can use it for smoothing. So we go to high pass. Now, when you're using a high res image, 240 pixels, big image like this one we've got here, a radius of around about 20 pixels will be perfect. If you're using low resolution images, like 72 pixels per inch, then I'd take it considerably lower than that. But we'll keep with this one here, 20 pixel radius there, and click OK. Then we'll go back to the filter menu, choose blur, and this time we'll add in a small amount of Gaussian blur. We only need to use a small amount here. Three pixel radius is perfectly fine. Again, this is a high res image, so that there would be lower if you were actually using a lower resolution image. So we'll keep it a radius of three pixels and click OK. So now the smoothing has actually been applied, but the picture does look a little bit flat, almost as if Rosie here is stood behind some kind of like translucent glass. So we need now to bring back highlights, which we can see that are missing in the eyes and certainly on her teeth, and also those darker areas and shadow areas around her teeth, in her eyes and around her hair as well. And that's really simple to do. So while we're active on the smooth skin layer, at the bottom of the layers panel, we're gonna to go to the FX icon and choose blending options. And in the blending options here, the layer style, we can see we've got the blend if uh, sliders just down here at the bottom part, bottom third here of the actual dialog box. And we're only gonna use the top one here, which is labeled this layer. Now, if I just take the black marker over on the far left-hand side of this and start to drag it across to the right-hand side, what you'll notice when you look at Rosie is that those highlights do start to come back. But if you look at the area around here of her lips, you can see how the transition there is extreme. It's really obvious what we're doing here, so we need to smooth that out. We can do that really easily by bringing this slider all the way back to the starting point. But this time when we drag it, hold down the Alt or Option key and click on that marker to split it into two. Now we'll drag it over to the right hand side and as we do so we start to see those highlight areas reappear again but this time the transition is much much more smoother. Certainly can tell that now around the lips. So that's the highlight that's brought in. Now let's bring back those darker areas, the shadows and mid-tones. Well this time we use the white point or the white marker on the far right hand side here and just like before we hold down the alter option key, click on the icon there to split it in two and start to drag this one way over to the left as well. And as we do that, you'll start to see that all those darker areas, the shadows and mid-tone areas start to now reappear and Rosie's picture actually starts to look quite normal again. So we'll leave it around about that point there and then click OK. Now that's the smoothing applied. We can see Rosie there, but the problem so far is that the actual smoothing has been applied to the whole picture. It's certainly on her skin, but it's also on her hair, on her teeth, on her eyes, and also on the background. So we just now need to control and restrict where we want that smoothing to be. Very, very simple to do that. We're just gonna use a layer mask. So I'm gonna hold down my Alt or Option key and click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layer panel. Now when I do that, we get a black layer mask, which means that the effect has been hidden 
Sweden. We can turn that lay mask on and off by holding down the shift key and clicking on the lay mask itself. It says before and after, before and after. So now that we've got the actual lay mask there, all we need to do, as we all know when we use layer masks, is paint with a normal soft edged round brush. Let's make sure there's no settings in there with a white foreground color to reveal it back. Now I'm actually gonna paint with the brush at 100%, even though the effect is a little bit too strong for me at the moment. So I'm gonna paint it in, I'll just quickly rush around here, paint it in, obviously you guys are gonna take a lot more care and attention when you're doing this, but I'm just gonna quickly paint it in just over her skin. So I'm gonna round the eyes, round the eyebrows, make the brush nice and big, paint that in, and we'll just come down over her face, just avoiding the actual teeth there. Let's paint across the base of her nose, underneath the eyes and so on. And I'll also just come down to here onto the neck and the chain. Now one little point as I'm doing that is, you may be tempted as you're doing this to be really careful as you're painting around the necklace. That's really quite challenging. All I would suggest you do, get a nice big brush, paint right over it, no problems with that whatsoever, because then when you finish painting all over the skin, all over the necklace, all you need to do is just change your foreground color to black, reduce the size of your brush, and then just paint along the line of the necklace there. Much, much quicker way of doing it, rather than taking your, try and, taking your time, rather, try not to paint over the necklace. Just do it this way, nice and quick, which has made a heck of a lot easier, actually, if you're using one of these Wacom tablets. Okay, so that's Rose's skin painted in there. It's nice and smooth. It's a little bit strong, but because we've used a layer here, we've got opacity available to us. Let's just bring the opacity down to somewhere around about something like, I don't know, 50-ish percent, something like that would be fine for me. So we can turn that on and off. I don't know if you'll be able to see that too well on your screen, but you can see we turn it on and off. It's nice and subtle like so. So it really smoothed down her skin. I mean, Rosie's skin was great anyway, but I will always add just a little bit of smoothing in regardless. Okay, so something like that. Now one extra little thing that I tend to do, you could actually leave it like this at this point, but one extra little thing I like to do, no matter what method it is I use for smoothing skin, is just add in just a little bit more contrast. So what I'm gonna do now is create a merged or stamped layer to the top of the layer stack. There's lots of ways you can do that using a long keyboard shortcut, but to keep it simple, let's just go to Select All, Edit, Copy Merged, and then Edit, paste. And what you'll see now over in the layers panel, we've got another layer at the top now, which is a combination of the two layers below. Then all I'll do once I've got that is go to the filter menu, choose sharpen and unsharp mask. Now I find this a great way of adding in some contrast without adding in any halos and also without giving any kind of a color shift as well. For something like this, we'll keep the amount at 10%, radius at 10 pixels and the threshold at zero. And let's just zoom in so you can see that there. Let's just turn that preview on and off. It's very, very subtle, but I just think it adds that extra little bit into it there. So we click OK. All right, so there you go. There's another little technique there, another smoothing technique that you can add into your Photoshop toolbox. I'll see you next time.